Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, my name is Ron, and today we are going to be talking about the builds that I use with the overclocks for the Wave Cooker. Um, the Wave Cooker has six overclocks currently, it has two clean, two balanced, and two unstable. We've already talked about the Wave Cooker without any overclocks, and the way that I build it, and the way that the Wave Cooker kind of works. Because the Wave Cooker by itself is honestly not a fantastic weapon, it's still not bad by any means because you do have infinite range with it. And it does have other abilities like extra slowdown and can hit multiple enemies very easily. But by itself it's just not as strong as some of the other secondary weapons. It's mostly that it becomes strong when you combine it with the primary weapons and that you build for it. So that means some of these builds are going to be tailored towards a specific weapon that I tend to use it with. That's not to say that's the only weapon you can use it with. You can use any of these with any of the weapons and probably have pretty good success. That's how most of the weapons in this game kind of work. So first up, we'll talk about the clean overclocks. The very first one is liquid cooling system, which makes it so you generate less heat, you have faster cooling, and you have less overheat duration. So if you do overheat it, it doesn't last as long. This one's great. This one's just an upgrade to the weapon. Usually I'll take this one with either the flamethrower or the uh, cryo gun. And I'll just use the Temperature Shock build on it, because even though the Temperature Shock build did get nerfed, sort of, it, it works the way that it's supposed to now. So it got nerfed from just being busted and being able to trigger it multiple times. I'll still usually run it like that. You could build it for the Sludge Pump too, but usually I'm running it with the Flamethrower or the Cryo Cannon, so I will share that build. Usually in Tier 1 I go with extra magazine size, this is just so that I have more ammo, although the extra AoE does work quite well too if you want to hit multiple enemies easier. Tier 2, any of these are great. Um, the extra reduction in heat I really like. That makes it so it's really difficult to overheat this weapon by accident. But extra rate of fire is pretty good and the faster cooling is also quite good. If you find yourself overheating it quite a bit, you can take this one and then knock it down to a 1.3 second overheat. In Tier 3, I like going with the uh, Ray here for more slowdown. You can go with the temperature amplifier. This can work too with the temperature build because you can switch back and forth between the heat and the cold and make this radiate to multiple enemies so you can trigger it multiple times. If you're doing that, I do like going with the larger lens just so that it's more easy to hit those enemies that you're already affecting. But usually I'll just go with the ray for extra slowdown. Tier 4, I like going with the wider lens just so that we can hit more enemies. Although the narrow lens is also pretty good to where you can just focus on one particular enemy. So if you're using this to take out acid spitters, web spitters, you can do that easier. The wider lens I really like for taking out jellyfish or swarmers. It clears them up really fast, uh, at least at a distance. Um, it's it's actually really good for taking out jellyfish at a distance. And then in tier 5, I'll go with the exothermic reactor. This is to trigger the thermal shock status effect so that we are dealing high damage when an enemy is frozen and then becomes thawed or when an enemy is on fire and then has the frozen effect activate on them. The second overclock that we have for the wave cooker is called Super Focus Lens. This gives us 50% more damage so long as enemies are within 4 meters of you. So if any enemy is that close to you, you can do a little bit more damage. You'll probably be using your primary weapon to do a bit more damage, which is why I don't really take this one with the flamethrower, although I will take it with both the cryo gun if I just want to kill things up close a little bit faster, or I'll take it with the sludge pump so that we can do a little bit more damage because enemies are likely slowed by the sludge pump. We can get right up in their face and do a little bit more damage. In tier 1, I like taking the convex lens here, getting more damage because this does scale off of our base damage, so we're doing a little bit more damage than we did before, although the extra ammo is nice too. Extra AoE is not super necessary with this one. In Tier 2, I like going with the larger power supply. This is for more damage per second when enemies are close. Um, I'm using this more for DPS at close range, or for more DPS at longer ranges too, because I can still take out acid spitters and web spitters with this pretty fast. Tier 3, I like going with the Ray. This slows enemies down, so they're even less likely to be able to hit me at that very close range. In Tier 4, both of these options are pretty good. Wide Lens works well if you want to still use it for clearing out jellyfish and stuff. I like it for that. But you could go with the Power Supply Overdrive, the Narrow Lens, to have an even higher rate of fire so that we're doing potentially even more damage per second at very close ranges to these enemies. I do like that one a little bit more. It is a little bit more fun in my opinion. And then in tier 5, since I'm usually taking this with the sludge pump or the cryo cannon, I don't usually go with the exothermic reactor, although it would still work perfectly fine on the cryo cannon. I uh, usually I'll take this either with the contagion transmitter so that I do even more damage on top of this, because this does stack if I'm using neurotoxin grenades or the sludge pump, or I'll go with the boiler array if I'm taking it with like the cryo cannon and I just want to kill things to potentially make them explode dealing damage to other enemies. Moving on to our balanced overclocks, the first one we've got is Diffusion Ray. This one makes it so you can penetrate up to three more enemies. Um, this counts in a line, so if you're already hitting multiple enemies, you can 
then go into even more enemies, and they are slowed by 20%. This comes at the cost of one damage though. This one I really find to be best used with the temperature build, so again with the cryo cannon or with the flamethrower. Um, usually I'll just build this for as much AoE damage as I can so I can inflict the uh, to thermal shock status effect as often as I can. So in tier 1 I'll go with the convex lens so that way we can hit even more enemies with this. It's more easy to hit multiple enemies. Tier 2 I like going with the heat sink so that our gun is not overheating as much or overheating as fast. Tier 3 I like going with the ray. This adds an additional slowdown to our slowdowns which you can already add more slowdowns on top of them with things like Neurotoxin Grenade or with um, just Sticky Flames Flamethrower. You can have the flame slowdown there too. You can stack a lot of slowdowns with Driller. And Tier 4, I like going with the wider lens. This makes your lens gigantic and makes it very easy to just hit absolutely everything and trigger the Thermal Shock status effect multiple times to multiple enemies. You could also take the uh, Amplifier here again to potentially spread that out to more enemies. That's not a bad option either, but I do really like the slowdown with this, so... It kind of depends what mood I'm in, what type of thing I'm running. If I'm running full reach flamethrower or full reach cryo cannon, then I will usually go with the amplifier just because it's easier to hit multiple enemies with both of those and trigger it multiple times. If I'm not and I'm using like face melter, then I will just go with the slowdown though. And then in tier five going once again with the exothermic reactor. This is just so that it triggers it uh, towards any enemies that are either frozen or burning. Usually burning because I'll usually take this as a flamethrower. Then we move on to our other balanced overclock, which is mega power supply. This one's pretty good too. This one increases our magazine size by 150, increases our rate of fire by three, but it does make it so our cooling is less and our overheat duration is longer. That's not a huge downside though for what it gives us. I'll once again usually build this for just triggering the uh, temperature shock, but you can really build it however you'd like. In this one, I really do like going with the extra magazine size just so that we have 550 rounds. You don't need that many and going with extra damage or extra lens width works just fine too. A lot of the time lens width is probably better but i just i like the ammo so much uh, in tier two i like going to the heat sink since we can overheat our gun easier building up less heat i find to be a bit more useful for this build you can go with a full dps build for this if you wanted to go with the larger power supply and the overdrive and then just go with damage and use this just for killing things at very long range that works too you can still overheat your gun very easily but it makes it so you can clear up things like acid spitters and web spitters super fast with this. For a general purpose build, I'll usually go with the either the lens or the ammo, go with the heat sink in tier two, go with once again either the slowdown or the temperature amplifier, whichever one you're feeling in tier three, going with the wider lens in tier four so that we have that really big lens, and then going with the exothermic reactor so that we can trigger this multiple times. This is probably one of my favorite overclocks for the wave cooker. It seems really good. The downside isn't that bad as long as you're not overheating the gun too often. And then we move on to the unstable overclocks and first up we have blistering necrosis. Now blistering necrosis is interesting. This makes it so whenever you're shooting an enemy there's a 10% chance that it will spawn an explosive boil on that enemy. If that is then shot with any weapon it will then explode dealing damage to the bug that it's attached to and destroying the boil so it won't trigger again. This does come at the cost of reduced cooling and increased heat so we can overheat the weapon easier than we normally would. The thing is though with this one, I take this with all of the primary weapons and I usually just build this as a damaging tool because most of the time I find myself just triggering blistering necrosis with the actual wave cooker rather than with the other weapons. So I usually use this more for crowd control or for single target damage at a distance. In tier 1 I like going with extra ammo because I am just using it for that reason. Most of our damage is going to be coming from the blistering necrosis itself, getting those boils to spawn. Going with extra damage doesn't really give us as much damage as going with extra ammo here. In tier 2 I will still usually take the heat sink so that we drop our heat generation down. This just makes it so the gun isn't overheating as much. You could take increased rate of fire, potentially try to get a little bit more damage per second out of it, but the gun will overheat pretty fast then. Tier 3 I like going with the slowdown because like I said I'm usually using this weapon by itself. The temperature really doesn't matter. Uh, a lot of times I'll be taking this with any of the weapons and if I'm taking like face melter where I have to be up very close, then this doesn't really help. Same goes if I'm using like the sludge pump in general. Tier 4, it's your choice. Both the uh, narrow lens and the wider lens are good. Just depends on what you want to be using it for, how often you want to use it. I actually don't really use the lens all that much when I'm using this overclock. So usually I'll go with the narrow one just so that if I do want to pick off something quickly like a web spitter, I can. Um, and then in tier 5, I go with the boiler ray. This is just so that it triggers more often so I can do uh, AoE damage with this. 
and deal even more damage at a distance into crowds and set those uh, blisters off a little bit easier. And then our last overclock is Gamma Contamination. Um, for some reason, I couldn't say that word. This one makes it so every shot from the gun has a 25% chance to irradiate an enemy. This deals 22 damage per second for 7 seconds. This also irradiates other enemies nearby doing 13 damage per second within a 2 meter radius. Downside to this one is that you get less damage, less magazine size, and less shot width. This one feels really strong, especially with the sludge pump. Um, and the damage over time effect is really good, especially with the slowdown from the sludge pump. So if you like taking something like Disperser Compound or Goo Bomber Special, this one I think works the best with the sludge pump. In tier one, I like going with the extra ammo. You don't really need extra damage because a lot of our damage is going to be coming from the radiation. So just making back our ammo is probably going to get us more overall. You could go with extra AOE and be able to hit more enemies, but I like the larger magazine size. Uh, in tier two, I'll usually go with the heat sink, although the cooling is also really good, and even the rate of fire is really good. Just depends on what you want, if you want more damage per second, or if you just want your gun to not overheat as quick. Tier three, I like going with the slowdown. If you're irradiating things and slowing them down, it just kind of helps, um, as well as you can stack it with the slowdown and the sludge pump, like I've explained before. Tier four, I'll usually go with the wider lens here, just so that it feels a bit bigger to hit multiple enemies but the narrow lens is also fine it's just you have a very narrow lens then but you're probably only going to be using that to hit web spitters or jellyfish or something that's really far away try to irradiate something quickly so both of these are pretty good it's it's really your call and then in tier 5 i will go with the contagion transmitter so that way you can do even more damage when they are affected by sludge or by the neurotoxin uh, and then i'll usually run this with the sludge pump i've also found that it works pretty well with the flamethrower too um, for the flamethrower, I'll just go with the boiler array and then just try to blow things up with this. That seems to work just fine too. So these are the builds that I use for the wave cooker. Hopefully this kind of helped you out, gave you some ideas for builds to try. And special thanks to the supporters of this channel. These are my members over here on YouTube and my patrons over on Patreon. They get early access to videos like this. And if you'd like to be a part of it, you can. There are links down in the description. Thanks everybody who does that. It really does help out. You guys take care. Have a great rest of your day and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.